Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books and today I'm here with the start of a new reading vlog and that is the Lunar New Year reading vlog. It is a readathon hosted by my best friends Lacey and Lisa. They are doing this readathon to celebrate the Lunar New Year. They did it last year. The goal is to read Asian authors and I don't remember the prompts. I don't even know if I paid attention to the prompts. I just have a bunch of Asian authors on my TBR. Well, let me pull it up real quick. So it is read a new to you author released from 2019-2021, recommended to you, read on the cover, and bonus is to watch the new To All the Boys I Love Before movie that comes out on the 14th. So this readathon takes place the 12th through the 14th. It's actually the 11th right now. I have a snow day again. It is our seventh snow day of the year and I'm annoyed. <laughs> so I'd rather be teaching. I'm kind of behind now and I teach a tested area so it's kind of stressful but it's fine. I am excited though. I've already started The Duke Who Didn't by Courtney Milan. This one is going to be the accounts for the 2020-2021 release. The new release. This is what it is. And this one actually has Asian characters. I've read another Courtney Milan. I've had read two. I've read one of our contemporaries and then I read The Duchess War, which I absolutely loved. But this one actually has two Asian main characters. It is historical. He is a Duke, but he actually hasn't told people that he's around that he's a Duke. So people don't know that he's the Duke. She is a girl who likes to make lists. I don't really have else to describe her. They like met three years ago and then he came back and now he's like I want you to marry me and like really he's like oh help me find a wife but you know he wants her to marry him. So it's really cute so far. She's also helping her father make like a secret sauce. He is a chef. I don't know if they called them chefs back then, but he cooks. And so that's how this is going so far. I'm really not that far into it, but I'm excited to read more today. And then I hope to read A Sweet Mess by J.C. Lee, another food romance. This one, she bakes, and I think they go on a baking show. Yes, they go on a celebrity cooking show. Did she cook? I thought she baked. I don't know, but they had a one night stand and this looks really cute. This one is the UK edition that Lisa actually got me for Christmas or my birthday. I don't remember which one. She got this for me for one of them. I also might read Dating Makes Perfect by Pin Tip Dunn. This one is a YA and she decides to date people and I don't remember why. Then I guess their sisters go to college and the parents are like, why aren't you engaged yet? So then they're like, I'm not getting married until I've dated. And so now they insist the youngest daughter must practice fake dating in high school to have experience before she decides to have a husband, I guess. So uh, that's a little confusing on the back, but I picked this up from Barnes & Noble, uh, I think over the summer, and I really wanted to read this because I love the cover. I've read Pin Tip Down before, but I've only read her like dystopian fantasy kind of books, so I'm excited to read this. And then I'm going to listen to a J.C. Lee Harlequin and this one I have on audio so I'm really excited to have the audio and it's really short it's the third book in the series I'm not remembering what it's called it's gonna be right here but I've read the first one and I enjoyed it so I'm excited off limits attraction I did want to listen to the sweet mess on audio but there's a four-week wait on that so I also might want to pick up these violent delights by Chloe Gong but this readathon is only three days and I'm starting it today but I don't think I'll read that as well but we'll see I've got tentatively five books on my TBR. I'm not going to read them all, but a girl can dream. So I'm excited for this. Reading more Asian authors. I did do an Asian author recommendation for romances post on my Instagram and I really have not read enough Asian authors. I had like five that I recommended that I really liked and six that are on my TBR. So I do really want to read Jen Frederick's new one. I think it's Heart and Soul and a girl goes to Seoul. So I'm really excited to read that one. I think I do have an e-arc of that too, but it doesn't come out for a while. So I'm excited to read these. So I'll talk to you when I've read some more. Hi guys. So I have on, I look absolutely ridiculous and now I understand why my sister's been making fun of me but I'm in the color is not looking good with my skin tone right now but I'm wearing my comfy sweatshirt it's like that huge sweatshirt you put it on and you just I like to put the hood up and I just like to sit here because this is very warm and it's cold and I had a blizzard from Dairy Queen and I was feeling very cold so I put it on and now I'm nice and toasty and I was reading my book and this is not the best so let me take this off Ugh. so now it's all up on me this is very slow and doesn't have a lot of plot to it so she's been trying to come up with a name for this sauce that her dad made and that's really it her and jeremy keep on talking to each other and i'm halfway through and nothing's happening. So I know people love this book. Like Crystal gave it five stars. Lacey gave it four stars. Everyone's like, it's amazing. And she has like a note at the end about it. 
I think about like the, oh, it's a very long author's note, about like the structure of the plot, which I'm interested to read about, but it's just very boring. Jeremy hasn't told anybody that he's a duke. No one knows that he's the duke of the place that they're all living in. They just think he's like a rich guy. And he hasn't been like taxing any of them or taking rent or anything. So it's interesting. I don't know what's gonna happen. Like I don't care about the romance whatsoever like the plot or anything i'm just kind of bored which makes me so sad because i love the duchess war and maybe it's because i started with the duchess war and now i have like super high expectations for this and it's nothing like the duchess wars romance was like making me feel because i loved that book like five out of five stars to that one this one it's just okay so we'll see how the rest goes i am supposed to get an ebay order tomorrow that i'm excited to show you because it's through the shop and it was super cheap so they're historical romances so i hope they end up good also my ipad that i've had for seven years finally pooped out on me and not because it doesn't work it does work now no apps are compatible with it because it's too old which really makes me angry because that's just apple forcing me to buy a new ipad because my ipad works fine i won it actually in a giveaway my junior year of college and that was 2014. so it's been almost seven years Maybe almost eight. I don't remember when in 2014 I got it. If it was 2014 or 2013. I don't remember what part of my junior year I won it. But I have used it since then. And I only use it for YouTube. And then I'll use it for Kindle app and Libby. I do have my own Kindle. But like if I'm ever like at the gym. Which I don't even go there anymore. I'll use my Kindle app to read. And so I was like asking online. And the iPad mini is 330 no $400 $400 for the iPad mini and then I found the iPad at Walmart for 300 and I target does price match so I might go to target tomorrow and just price match it since I live by a target and I already ordered a case but what's annoying is I love my iPad mini size but the iPad mini is 400 the regular is 300 I tossed around getting a Kindle fire but people said it's really not like if you're used to an apple product don't get it because it's like a lot slower and clunkier and they don't last as long so biting the bullet i'm gonna get an ipad i'm just really mad that i look ridiculous right now i'm just really mad that i have to buy a new one when my old one's perfectly fine i just can't now download any apps onto it because it's too old even though function wise it's fine very very annoyed so that's how my day's going we just finished season one of the mandalorian i'm gonna read some more Hey guys, so it is Saturday. Oh, I was gonna grab my iPad. I bought a new iPad this morning. I went to Target and they price match. So Walmart had it on their website for $30 cheaper than what Target did. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> Here it is, it is really big. I got a spec case. So on um, Best Buy, this case was on sale for $23 instead of 40. And I've always used spec cases. Um, especially for my phone and then my uh, iPad mini though was a different case that I found at like um, Like office max or something for really cheap staples I think this is pretty much the same color as my mini but it is the slate gray So I picked this up I was just watching Tori on here and it's a little bigger, but I really like it um, But I went to Target I was looking around and I was like I don't need more clothes and then Desiree told me I should so I got a sweater It was only $12 and then my iPad and then I had to stop by Best Buy for their pickup So that was my morning and I finished my JC Lee audiobook and I think I'm gonna give it three stars It was just like it's a Harlequin and I don't think that the narrators made it any better like it sounded worse when the narrators were reading it because it just felt like some of it was like not you know like natural dialogue it felt kind of cheesy very very insta love i was shocked by the end i was like you love each other and you want to marry each other like you don't even know each other and so it was fine and the girl she so the premise is like she owns a company and but she's like working for her dad but her dad was like doing shady things and like the guy thinks that the love interest is like part of the shady things so he was gonna get close to her and work with her to try to figure it out like the secret that she was like double crossing them because it had to do with something in the previous book and I knew she was gonna figure it out and then like say like oh my gosh you just want to get to me because you're spying on me I hate you and like leave and that is what happened and so it was just very predictable and it was fine. I'm giving it three stars. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't horrible. It was just like super insta love though. She also has a British accent. She's supposed to be British, but the narrator didn't have a British accent except for when they were talking in her voice, which I thought was weird because we had two narrators because it was third person limited switching between her and him. So if it was third person limited for her, 
like shouldn't the narrator also have a british accent the whole time i don't know it just kind of felt weird to me that it like felt like we were still like in her head but we didn't get a british accent but it was fine three stars for that one and i'm still trying to make my way through this one i'm gonna finish this today it's probably gonna be a three star read too at this point but then i'm gonna start these violent delights because i asked on instagram if I, if I should read these violent delights or a sweet mess and everyone told me to read these violent delights so i'm in a fantasy mood so i'm gonna read that next but i'm gonna go to my parents house and then i have my live show tonight and i'm wearing my fabio sweatshirt so life's good ignore my laundry basket behind me but i want to show you some books i got and then i'll update you on what i've read so far this weekend so this whole stack is what I've gotten so far and they are for a couple videos that I want to do and because I want some with good step backs. So this one I'm so excited for. It has the step back, it has the peacock and he's got a mustache if you can see and I might do a mustached hero historical reading vlog. We've got a viking which i'm gonna do a viking vlog soon so we have viking we have gentle warrior then we have viking captive and then this one i got for the step back because you guys know i love pirates and he is a pirate and they're on a ship so i had to get this one these are all from a seller on ebay this one gorgeous i just saw this picture on pinterest i was looking for a step back picture to use for my instagram story and i always use pinterest for that and then this one I think I saw on someone's story and I was like, yes, please, I need that. This one they had and I was like, sure. So if I see a seller selling books on eBay, I'll go to Goodreads and look at the step back on Goodreads because you can see that underneath the picture. There's an, It'll say like one more photo and you click on that, it'll show you the step back. So this one's actually sci-fi, I think, and it reminds me of Ice Planet Barbarians. Oh, you can't really see that, but I'm excited to read that. And then another Viking, Connie Mason's a classic open this with that gorgeous step back i really love that i'm excited to read that i'm excited for the viking viking reading vlog another highlander one this one i saw on instagram look at the ponies in the corner crystal from crystal's bookish life was excited for the horses and then the last one's another viking one sandra hill who's a super popular viking historical romance out there but this is like super thick but i'm excited for that so pretty so those are all the historicals i've gotten recently oh and then i was sent this i was really excited the spinster in the rake oh i'm so excited for this so it is Sunday about noon. I'm about to sit down and film my mid-month wrap-up and it's been a busy day. I woke up and went for a run. It was 18 degrees but you know I do what I gotta do to get my runs in. We're supposed to get like 10 inches of snow over the next few days so I wanted to run before being stuck inside all day. So I had to run in the streets though because nobody shuffles their sidewalks here so it's fine. I run at 7 in the morning so no one's on the roads anyways. So then I had to finish sewing some sleeves and then I ironed my sleeves, took pictures of my sleeves, took pictures of my masks and then I could finally sit down and read a little bit. So I'm only about 35 pages into these violent delights but it's good so far people are like dying and like killing themselves like clawing their own throats out so it's very interesting and they're like the rival families already so i'm excited to see where that goes but i did finish the duke who didn't and giving it three stars it wasn't awful like the romance was actually really cute but as a whole book itself the plot was really lacking nothing really happened it was just like oh can we get this sauce out and let's jar all the jars and let's name the sauce and let's go to this village i think they went to london together to get something for her dad because he has a, a condition where his hands really hurt and he was like helping her do the jars he shouldn't have and so she had to go figure that out i do like the family aspects and then like talking about their families i really love that part of the book and i really did enjoy their romance near the end i didn't really get their connection in the beginning i feel like if we had a couple of flashback chapters maybe in the beginning of them being in love i would have liked it more but i just felt kind of disconnected from their romance and i didn't get why jeremy was so in love with her so it was fine it was fine. The romance was cute, but it could have been better. I was kind of bored, and a couple of people on Instagram felt the same way I did, so I didn't feel as bad not loving it, because I know everybody loves it, but I gave it three stars. So, so far for this readathon, I have two three-star reads, but I'm really enjoying these Violent Delights. Hopefully, I can get a lot of it read today. I really don't think I'll finish it today, but we'll see, and then that'll be it for this vlog. I know I wanted to read a couple more romances, but then I just started listening to other audiobooks. I listened to a Ruby Dixon one, because I really wanted an alien romance. I don't know why. Avery from Avery Loves Books was reading that and I'm like I haven't read one in so long so I picked up the core stairs captive I think and it was really good and then I'm listening to a quarter frost and starlight because the new Sarah J Mass book comes out on Tuesday and I've never read this and it's pointless I'm giving it one star I hate it but I'm trying to finish it so that I can say that I've read it so that I've read all the books in the series but it's dumb like there's no point to the story she's like I want to paint 
what do I get Reese? Reese, what are you gonna get me for my birthday? It was it's so dumb. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. I gotta go film my wrap up though, and then go read some more. Take my babies. Hi. You wait for me. Hi, cutie. I know. I know. So cute. Scratching. Oh. Hey guys. So it is currently Monday. It is President's Day. I think. I'm here with my babies. Good girls. Okay, so I was supposed to have a bit of a busy day. I was supposed to go to the dentist, but it snowed last night and none of our roads were clear. I actually like left the house to go at 7.30 so my appointment was at 8 and they're about 20 minutes away. None of the roads were clear. I was sliding all over the place, so I turned around and canceled. Then, we were supposed to have an estimate on our fireplace to see how much it would cost to replace our fireplace with a gas one because it's currently unusable right now and it's freezing by it because the insulation is awful and they canceled <laughs> because we're supposed to get six to nine inches throughout the day and the night so i bet you i will have a snow day tomorrow we'll see but i am almost 300 pages into these violent delights and i'm not loving it i'm sad to say i'm not loving it it's it, marketed as Romeo and Juliet retelling in the 1920s in Shanghai. I don't think they should have marketed it as a Romeo and Juliet retelling because the romance is non-existent <laughs> so far. Apparently they were like also had a thing four years ago before like their parents found out and then um, Juliet was like shipped off to America. That's not the plot of Romeo and Juliet so I don't know why. I think maybe it's just like she's using like the family feud as a plot but you can have a family feud plot without being Romeo and Juliet. So I'm not sure I like the fact that it is marketed as Romeo and Juliet because there's really no romance. They're finally working together and I'm over halfway through the book and they're trying to figure out what this monster is that's killing people with like these insects and like people are like tearing out their own throats. So they're trying to figure out who's doing that and why and they're finally having to team up even though they have rival families and Juliet's supposed to be this like kick butt heartless person who can kill people. And I'm kind of bored, so I don't know. I feel like I've just been reading very okay books for this readathon. Like technically, the readathon's over. It ended yesterday, but I want to finish this today. But I'm not loving it. Maybe the ending will be better. I don't know. Everyone seems to love it. This has over four star already on Goodreads, but I'm leaning more towards a three. I've heard the ending's good, but I don't know. It's just okay. They're not. They haven't really done a lot. But like halfway through, they're finally like, okay, let's go and try to figure out what this thing is. I'm like. What have we been doing for half the book? So not a lot's really happening, but it's okay. I don't know, we'll see. And I'm just like really bummed about the romance because there really isn't any and it shouldn't be marketed that way if it's not a romance, so. Hey guys, so it is three o'clock. I just finished this about half an hour ago and I'm giving it three stars. I'm sticking with what I felt. I do think that the Romeo and Juliet aspects kind of more so intertwined at the end, but I still don't like the romance. And I know like I shouldn't be judging this based on the romance, but like I'm a romance reader and this was like heavily marketed as a Romeo and Juliet retelling and about the star-crossed lovers and passion and it was okay i feel like we needed a lot more of their past because a big part of the thing says um he was her first love until he betrayed her and like we got that betrayal a little bit at the end but like i still didn't feel like they loved each other or i didn't really see that romance between them and i would have loved flashbacks i think a lot of kind of second chance things or people who have experience with one another and then like had a big falling out or like big space between their romance a uh, flashback really helps establish that love and I did not get that at all so I had a really hard time understanding like their love for each other especially because we didn't really get them together in the book until like halfway through but the plot was fine the villain I did feel like was a little bit over the top at the end and I did like the mystery and I thought that was interesting and it did keep me reading like I finished this in a day if you go from like when I started it yesterday to today I really overall pretty much finished this in a 24 hour period but it was my favorite and I'm surprised people are like hyping this. I did love how they were very skilled with weapons and like she would just pull, pull out a knife and fling it wherever she wanted to and it hit its mark and she was really good at shooting her gun and stuff. I thought that was really cool. I liked the feud between the families 
but the plot was kind of slow. I didn't really love it. The romance really missed the mark for me, so three out of five stars for this one. I do know Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany. I follow her on Goodreads. We have such similar taste when it comes to what we rate things, and so she also rated this three stars, so I feel valid because people who I know have my same taste felt the same way I did about this book. That's my thoughts, and that means that every book I read was three stars, which isn't bad. Like, these aren't bad books. They were just a little disappointing, and I wanted more from them, so so that's how my Lunar New Year readathon went. Let me know if you read any of these or if you participate in the readathon and what you ended up reading. I'm kind of regretting now that I didn't pick up the romances because I was actually in like a really big fantasy mood, but this didn't hit that itch of fantasy. I wanted like more fantasy. So I should have just picked up these, but I didn't. Let me know if I should still pick these up because I really want to. But I have to read my book club pick, Joanna Lindsay next for Historical Hellions. So I gotta stop this vlog. But that's all I have. Again, let me know what you read and what your thoughts of these books. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.